Plato's Allegory of the Cave. This allegory is found in Plato's Republic, which acts to set out and describe an ideal and just world. Of the many interpretations, the most widely accepted are that the allegory attempts to describe a philosopher's ascent to knowledge, or it's a religious enlightenment, or an examination of politics, or the cave is a representation of ourselves. Each idea has objections, yet all remain valid explanations of the role of the cave allegory. The allegory of the cave, in essence, describes the human condition in one way or another. People, equal to ourselves, are imprisoned from birth and held in place only able to face the back wall of a cave, and so are living in relative darkness to the true world beyond. This wall shows shadows of the world outside, where there is light from a fire, and in front of this is most commonly puppets and people carrying objects. The prisoners can only see the shadows of these figures and play games based on these, believing these shadows to be reality. One of these prisoners is dragged from the cave into the light, causing pain to his eyes, and must climb a difficult and steep incline until he can truly see the sun. Once learning of the true reality beyond the cave, the freed prisoner is compelled to return to save the others. They, however, do not believe him and attack him and his claims. It would initially seem obvious that the allegory is an explanation of the philosopher's ascent to knowledge. The escaped prisoner would represent the philosophers leaving the darkness of beliefs which exist in reality and taking the arduous journey to knowledge. Those without philosophy would be left in the darkness of their reality, which merely reflects a small image of the truth and knowledge beyond. The sunlight at the end of the path would be the philosopher's understanding of the forms, specifically the form of good. Physical objects are related to these forms in that they reflect a form or forms. The form of beauty, for example, can be reflected in many different and varied objects. This form of beauty itself, though, is universal, and each of these objects which contain beauty are only able to represent a part of it. These forms exist themselves universally outside of space and time, and it is these forms which must be accessed in order to have knowledge. The allegory could also be about religious enlightenment, the sun representing the light of the good. The prisoner who is enlightened to religion is momentarily released from the ignorance and darkness of humanity. The newly found illumination of this freed prisoner enables him to become an authority on morality. This new knowledge of religion and moral judgments would permit him to take a role of authority back to the cave. His return to the cave would therefore be an attempt to enlighten the imprisoned to this religion he found beyond, although they refused to accept this. The difficult journey from the cave could be understood as a religious pilgrimage in the search of spiritual enlightenment and the absolute good. It is because they lack the spiritual journey that those who remained in the cave were unable to understand the light of the good. This religious idea often leads to the division of the universe into two distinct realities, that of the physical and that of the heavenly world. Another interpretation follows that of politics. The allegory could follow Plato's idea in the Republic of a city of perfect justice in which there are three classes of people, the guardians, soldiers and craftsmen. The guardians would rule with the concurrence of the two other classes. For the aim of justice, these rulers would necessarily be successful philosophers of knowledge, although people of our imperfect society would not accept philosophers having this position. The cave would therefore represent the city and the relations with the state. The men imprisoned in the cave are not the only men. There are also those outside the cave, casting the shadows like puppeteers. These tricksters casting the shadows would represent politicians creating false and misleading images for society to follow, keeping the citizens in chains. The cave could also be a representation of ourselves, or at least a part of us. The idea that we are only able to see what is projected to us from outside. The darkness of the cave would be the part of ourselves which focuses on mere images, while the fire beyond would be that part of us which is able to see beyond these enforced ideas and images to the existence of something else, something greater. This part of us able to escape into the light is only able to do so momentarily and is able to progress beyond the mere fire to the true light further beyond. If this is the case, then there can be no possibility of permanent and true escape 
as we cannot escape from ourselves. To escape from the cave would be to escape being human. These are only a few interpretations of the allegory, as it seems it can be understood in a variety of ways, each seeming to be almost equal in validity. Each idea manages to place true knowledge in some sense beyond the cave wall. Each explanation, though, does make it seem possible that some people may be able to perceive the existence of and gain this knowledge which lies beyond what we are limited to encounter usually.